We are now more than halfway through the year and you know what that means? Another Home Assistant release is here, 2022.7. This month we see improvements to the UI, even more performance and stability upgrades and a new feature for templates. But let's get into the first one, easier updates for Z-Wave devices. If you're using Z-Wave JS for your Z-Wave devices, you can now upload and update the firmware for your Z-Wave devices directly from the Home Assistant UI, so that you can keep everything up to date and running smoothly. Previously, this feature was available in the slightly more advanced Z-Wave JS to MQTT add-on, but it's cool that this has now been added to the main UI of Home Assistant using the standard Z-Wave JS add-on, and it all just happens seamlessly without having to jump into another console to do it. This is of course if the manufacturer of your Z-Wave device publicly provides the firmware for that device, which hopefully they do. And if you haven't followed along with the recent Linus Tech Tip saga, they recently had a video where Linus was unable to obtain the firmware for his Z-Wave smart light switch so that he could update them through Home Assistant. He called that company out publicly, which they then eventually followed through on and provided the firmware for everyone to download. And Jasco, who is the aforementioned company, worked with Home Assistant to provide the files for everyone, which is really cool. So I'm guessing that's where this feature stemmed from. Either way, I'm glad this is here and in the UI and even easier than ever before to update the firmware on your Z-Wave devices. Next up, we have a feature that I was literally wishing I had during the DIY presence sensor video a few days ago, and that is that you can now select multiple devices and entities in the history panel. This will allow you to see the state change for more than one entity at a time so that you can make direct comparisons between them. The reason I wanted this was so that I could show you more easily direct comparisons between the DIY sensor and the FP1, but regardless, that is now a feature in the UI and is a welcome addition. Plus, you can also select an area which will load all of the devices in that area if you want to so that you can check the state of everything in one place. It seems we are also becoming accustomed to seeing performance improvements in every new release these days, since this is the fourth month that we are seeing performance updates in a row. And this time there are some really big ones. Firstly, there has been some optimization and improvements to the way YAML and JSON is handled, which perhaps doesn't mean so much to you as the end user, but the upshot is that this should help improve things like the restart times of Home Assistant itself, as well as reloading individual components or automations. It should also help with the speed and responsiveness of the UI too. Secondly, there has been an improvement to the way that integrations for devices that have errors are handled when Home Assistant starts up, meaning that they should recover much faster as soon as they become available again. Thirdly, if you use HomeKit or Apple TV with Home Assistant, there has been a change to a better and faster encryption method in the back end, which should improve performance of those devices too. Finally, if you use Home Assistant OS, supervised or container, Python has been updated to a newer version, which again brings some performance improvements too, right out of the gate. Nice. Next, have you ever had a weather integration or device that has a temperature, rainfall, air pressure, wind speed, or something like that, but the unit of measurement is wrong for the way that you like? Well, this release now allows you to go in and change the units of measurement for those entities so that you can have them set just the way you want them. Simply go in, find the entity and open the settings panel, and you'll have access to change any of the supported units of measurement. Another thing that has also been added in the UI is that the gauge card now supports adding an optional label. So you may remember back in the 2022.5 update, the gauge card receives support for defining segments. Well now with this release, you can also define a label to go along with that segment, making it easy to get information at a glance for those of you making use of the gauge cards in your dashboard. Another card that has also been improved is the area card which now supports adding flood alerts from leak sensors, as well as humidity and temperature onto that card, making it easier to see everything at a glance. Finally, for the little things in this release, Icon Autocomplete is now supported in the template editor, so you can now quickly and easily find the icon you want when adding templates. There is a new advanced bool function that can be used in templates to convert a regular value into a true or false value, 
Jellyfin now supports movie collections in the media browser. And finally, the Akara FP1 is now officially supported in ZH8. This release doesn't see any new integrations this month, but it does see five new integrations available to set up inside of the Home Assistant UI. The addition of the scrape sensor is a nice one. That's one of those sensors that you hope you never have to use, but it does come in handy when you have no other option. So good to see that being added to the UI to make things easier. Finally, make sure to check out the breaking changes section as always. I don't see anything major this month other than two related to the Python upgrade mentioned earlier. The first one is that since Python is being automatically upgraded on OS, supervised and container installs, you may need to just check that any custom integrations installed from Hacks also support Python 3.10, which hopefully they should do out of the box. The second one is related to Bluetooth and quite an outdated Bluetooth library that hasn't been updated since 2018. This library no longer works with Python 3.10 either and there are six integrations still using this old library which will stop working if you upgrade so make sure to check out those first before upgrading hopefully these integrations will be updated soon to use the newer recommended library to avoid this situation and that is going to do it for this month's video i hope you find it useful and interesting leave me a comment down below on what your favorite new feature was from this release i am personally a fan of the performance improvements as you guys all know, so happy to see even more squeezed out of the already great performance improvements, which is cool. Whilst you're down there, make sure to drop this video a like and get subscribed, and I will see you in the next video.